Hitmaker extraordinaire with us today. Make sure you get into the chat room, into the corner office. We have Manny Marroquin on this week's Pensado Place. Back on me that fast? Good grief. Everybody, welcome to This Week in Pensado's Place. I'm Dave Pensado. We're here with uh, my co host, Herb Trowick. David. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're, the, you're the medicated one, and I'm the one blowing <laughs> everything it, over here. Is it that it? <laughs> That's all right. Even on drugs, I can function. So We need to raise the price that they pay for this show, Will. Can you work on that? I need some, I need some serious, like, screenwriters or something. We, we got you covered. I need, uh, but uh, this week, we got a great week for you, a uh, great show for you. Um, corner office, make sure you get in our chat room. You know that's powered by our... You, uh, by Ustream, and our man Zan Nakari is over there doing his thing. Zan, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Looking good in your hat. Thank you, sir. Cool. So uh, make sure you jump in the chat room and fill us up. You can also right. reach us uh, at Pensado Place at thisweekend.com. You can hit our Twitter handle at Pensado Place. There's always you want the Facebook page. Um, so we want to get in there. We've got great we got great guests and great questions for you. Um, you, you want if to I stop you midstream, you have to start over again. Is that what's going on there? Potentially. Okay. I'm just going to remind people that you can get the uh, Zan Nakari line of clothing at Pensada's place. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah available. exactly. It's available. Boxer yeah. shorts and other things. Yeah. At, 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 at any rate, let, another bit of housekeeping we want to do. We've, we've been getting a lot of requests uh, for Dave to come speak at schools and do things like that and inquiries. So keep that stuff coming. Dave likes doing that kind of stuff. We'll organize it and try to get back to you and see if we can work that out. But anyways, um, what are we doing this week, Dave? Uh, well, we're going to enter the lair, be what we do first. And um, um, it's kind of an unusual into the lair this week. It, 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 you might think originally, initially, that it, it's one thing, but it's another. We'll get into that in a little bit. And then I'm really excited to have my friend, longtime friend, Manny Merrickin on the show today. I, I think Manny and I have been friends now about 20 years or so, 19 or so. Uh, we're we're really lucky to have him. Have him. Manny uh, just won the Grammy for Best Engineer, which is the big one, the big one. Congrats, man! That is incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, they actually like a normal Grammy is about this big. The Engineering Grammy is about this. Big. It takes four people to carry it's it. Fabulous. Oh no, it's a special. Can you call that SSL Grammy? No. Neve Grammy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the comedy to the professionals. No, okay. <laughs> uh, but today we're going to go um, uh, after Into the Lair. We're going to spend the rest of the show. With, uh, we're going we're to spend the rest of the show with Manny. So, uh, if you've got some questions for him, I've got a few questions for him. So it, it, just just keep those cards and letters coming. You want to get right into it? Run right into Into the Lair. Into the Lair. Let's okay. roll it. Kenny, Into the Lair. Will. Oops. Caught me listening to uh, some headphones. I'm listening to the uh, Ultrasone 750 Pro 750. I know this. I know this sounds like a commercial, but trust me, it's not. I use um, I use headphones to um, kind of negate the sound of the room, and these are particularly a good choice because they're very flat and they're non-fatiguing. They uh, incredible. Check them out on the web. Ultrasone Ultrasone 750s. And um, a lot of times, if uh, my room's a little live, so if I want to check, ref you know, delays and reverbs and stuff, it's it's just easier to throw on a set of headphones, and then and then the room becomes uh, a non-factor. What we're going to talk about today is something that some of you might like, some of you might not. About half my friends use some sort of referencing technique when they're mixing, and the other half uh, say that it's the worst thing that you could ever do. So I personally use it probably more than anybody. I like to uh, play DJ while I'm, while I'm working. If your brain is wired to where it messes with you to hear something else and, and then you're influenced by it, then this technique is not for you. What I tend to listen for is a, a variety of things other than, than specific sounds. I, 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 I'll listen to the emotional elements of things and we're going to delineate some of the other things I listen to. Let's jump right into it, Zan. Um, let's pretend I couldn't get uh, I, I didn't have time to get permission from all the lawyers to use an existing mix I was working on, so I'm just going to pull out a, a song from the past, uh, Silky Fine, Romeo and Juliet, the instrumentals on here, so I thought the instrumental would be, be kind of cool to use. 
Let me play a piece of that for you. Get out of headphone mode on my have a set. Okay, so let's pretend like that's our mix. Let's do this. Let's start by muting our mix. Um, normally I let it bang just into the red, but for the sake of today I'm just going to put a piece of tape so I can remember which LEDs are lit up. So here's where my mix is hitting on Romeo and Juliet. Now let's try a, another mix that we're going to kind of compare to. So, there we go. Looks like it's about the same. Um, normally, uh, normally I ask for criticisms and suggestions and stuff. Uh, on this particular technique, don't bother, I ain't going to read them. If you got something positive to say, fine. If this, if this technique isn't for you, then it's not for you. I know it's not the best thing in the world. It's just the way I learn, and so I'm sharing it with you. Um, so now let's, let's, let's monitor again. So now we're hearing. Okay, that's the mix we're going to compare to the young bird. Okay, the first thing you notice is the mid range is quite a bit different. Uh, the compression techniques we use nowadays. Yeah, I, I picked this song because even, ma you know, both of them are mastered, but. Uh, quite a bit of difference from 15 years ago to now. Now on the Young Bird song, when I listen to that, what I listen for is I like to listen to the kick drum on my NS10s. It, uh, Jason Joshua taught me uh, uh, this about this song. There's something about the kick drum on the 808 that, uh, not, uh, not the 808, but the kick drum on the NS10s really kind of lets you know what your kick drum should sound like on an NS10 on the low end because obviously you can hear the top end but uh, that's a good reference for, for, the, for like say 200 cycles, 160 in there on your kick drums if, if, if you're, if you're kind of in that area. Also too the mid range on this is really good, really tight. You probably wouldn't want to be any more mid rangey than this. Now I've made a list of a couple of things. I like this Natalie and Bruglia song to kind of show me the sibilance on vocals. If, if I play my mix and then play that mix and my S's are not quite as bright, I, 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 I'll, I'll work on them because I think the S's on that song, when I hear that song on the radio or heard that song on the radio, I really like the way they sounded. So I use that kind of like to get me in the ballpark for S's. Now, another song that I like to use is um, um, this Teddy Riley song. Teddy is a huge, huge influence on me. Uh, my friend Keith Andes came to me one day. We were mixing, and, 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 and I thought I was killing the mix, and Keith was like, Dave, new ball game. you got to hear this. Man, it, it, this mix was blowing me away. So uh, I, I kind of use it as a guide for mid-range and, and a parent level. Go back and forth. Just kind of darker the other song, which is not bad. We're not, we're not talking bad or good. We're talking just, you know, what we're looking for. So, so we know we know if 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 this was our mix, we know well. If if we like it, we like it. Print, go home. If, if you think maybe you want to go back and listen to the mid-range on this and kind of get you a little more mid-range, you'll know not to go past this, but to maybe... Anyway, it gives you an idea of kind of how to judge what's out in the real world. So, Teddy, good apparent level. Um, not, not a lot of sub-low end like we use today, but... Uh, that that particular mix works good in the rock world too because it doesn't have a lot of low end, but it also has uh, by low end I mean the subby kind of low end, but the mid range is very aggressive. Now, so that's 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 what we use. For, that's what I kind of tend to listen to. I'm gonna play you a piece of a Mariah Carey song that I I listen to once in a while because I like what uh, I'm pretty sure this was uh, Mick Kazowski's mix. Uh, he was using digital EQ before a lot of people, and I like the graininess, I guess is the way to call it on this vocal. Pretty cool. 
Yeah. It's real nice. So, so you know, when you um, when you're listening to your vocal and you wanna you wanna know, God, am I too bright? Am I not bright enough? How am I gonna stack up against the rest of the world? That's a good judge for that. Um, let's click over to another. Now I like uh, I like what Spike did on this. This this has a another uh, use of compression, transient designer uh, on the drums. Um, the mid range on this is really strong. I like the way the vocal sits. So here we go. Sometimes I think my snare. Sometimes I think my snare is like loud enough and then I'll, I'll hear a song like that and I'm like, wow, that sounds a little more exciting than mine because of the placement of the snare. So, you know, check that out. I'm going to play you a John Legend song mixed by Manny American. I love this mix. It's, it's a very honest mix. Um, and sometimes I like to listen to it just to make sure that um, I can follow it because my mix is would probably be, probably be characterized as having maybe a little more top end, and here again, that's not a right or wrong. Uh, I, I I I love Manny's work, but I got to follow it on the radio sometimes. And I want to I want to make sure that that I can follow it. So this me, is it's me. Maybe I bore you. A no, no, it's my fault. Cause I can't really, 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 really good. Uh, what Manny can do, not too many other people can do. So I like that song just to kind of make sure that uh, that my mix doesn't sound too bright compared to that mix. And then it's a good judge for low end. Manny's always good on the low end too. Uh, I, another song I like is um, one of Phil Tan's mixes. Uh, this 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 particular song, um, I like the way Phil put the instruments relative to the drums. If and sometimes in hip hop you'll have the instruments a little lower than you would relative to the drums um, on say an, uh, an R&B song or, or a pop song and that, in, in rock circles you would have the guitars a little louder than uh, than uh, the drums sometimes but I like the way Phil did the ratio he, he chose for this is really good <laughs> little organy kind of sound. It's up there. It's, it's so, so sometimes when, when I'm trying to, when I say sometimes, it, it, a lot of you guys when you get tired you just run into the bedroom go to sleep. Uh, I usually have to finish a mix a day and so uh, I'm making a lot of critical, critical decisions after uh, 10 straight hours of mixing without a break. So Sometimes the references will just kind of steer me back into line. A lot of people take an ear break. Uh, what I tend to do is just play DJ and play some of these things and then switch back and forth rapidly to my stuff and, 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 and I, I, it keeps me honest. Uh, my all-time favorite mixer in the world, Bob Power did this. It's a, it's a root song. I, I, I like the combination of, of where he placed his top end, where he placed his bottom end, his sub. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play long enough for you to hear the sub, but you'll, you'll recognize this is a root song. I like his stereo field. I like the width. Um, this is a good song, to, to, especially when it gets going. It's a really good song to kind of make sure that, that, that you're placing your, your, your top end instruments in the mix properly because uh, if you're louder than that, you're probably too loud. If you're lower, you're probably too low. Now here again, footnote before, uh, before we eat up all the bandwidth on the internet telling me that real men don't do this. Maybe they don't. But uh, most of you guys out there are not doing this for a living. You're, you're trying to and you want to. And so these are just kind of techniques maybe for the newer guy, maybe for the more experienced guy. I don't know. You're going to have to make up your mind about that. But I would highly recommend that you modify these techniques to fit your own style. Kind of go a little, little uh, I, I started to say old school. I hate to think of John Gass as old school, but one thing you'll notice about this song is, uh, here again, it's an older song on the level, but I like what John did on the background vocals. So I listened to background vocals on this song. And then um, 
if I was doing a ballad or something, I might I might take a listen to this song. It's a very classy mix. The mix just sounds expensive. I said this to the background sound. I don't know if I'm gonna play them. Okay, so we don't hear any backgrounds. Buy that or get, get an iTunes version of that. I'm going to leave you with one last song. Uh, the, the, the people that know me know that, that uh, I can be a little, um, my emotions are kind of like on a roller coaster during the course of a day. And sometimes I need to just get feeling good. And whenever I just need to feel good, I play this song. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't even want you to to get it, but this is my favorite pick me up, just have fun song. Makes me smile, just makes me happy. So sometimes um, I was doing a, a mix for Cash Money about uh, how long ago is that? Maybe a month, about a month ago, and and it needed a, a it needed it had some 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 kids in the course, and it needed a just to be happy and vibey and. I, uh, it was about, I guess it was already about two in the morning and I'm, I'm starting to work on the vocals and I, I just, I just didn't have a clue and, uh, so I played that and it just made me happy so I just worked on my song till it made me happy and it, and I think it worked. So, anyway, um, I hope this will help you out. I know this is not a, 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 our most technical into the lair but it's something I get a lot of questions about and I just wanted to share it with you. Thanks guys. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I want to add a little tiny footnote to what you just saw. There's a lot of applications to that. Uh, I got a question from someone recently um, about how do you go into a strange room. That These techniques that you just saw can apply to that. Someone asked me, how uh, do you choose monitors? This technique will apply to that. Uh, when, you're in a, when you're listening to your monitors, how can you tell if they're accurate? This technique applies. So. It's not, it's not just what you see that it is. Think about it, and, and you can apply this technique that you just saw to uh, a lot of things. Uh, on some upcoming Into the Layers, we're going to discuss uh, how to do vocals, uh, mix-wise and tracking. We've, we've got uh, a lot of good stuff for you. Uh, today is no exception. We've got some good stuff for you today. Like we told you earlier, we're sitting here with Manny American. Um, Manny is one of those engineers that just has gifts that allow him to do pretty much any genre. Um, in fact, remember that, that poker record we were listening to the other day, Herb? That, that, that showed some Study. pretty serious insight Study. into the... The bass line. The, the bass line, famous. you know? Funky. I thought so. <laughs> the way he handled the tuba was pretty, pretty Funky. amazing. Funky. Uh, but Manny... Made my ringtone. Uh, ch check this out, guys. Manny has mixed uh, hundreds of records, but thousands of records, but... This is the guy that mixed Whitney Houston, Tupac, John Mayer, Alicia Keys, Rihanna, Kanye West, and Maroon 5. Wow. That's a pretty... <laughs> That's pretty That's so with, with, without further ado, get this damn camera off of me and get it on to Manny. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, Ian, you guys out there, let's give Manny a round of applause. He won the engineering Grammy for the John Mayer album Battle Studies. <laughs> Thank the you. Big one, the big one. So he put that on the shelf with his other four Grammys. And uh, one of the things that, that I find fascinating about you, Manny, is that there's considered a traditional route to success in our business, and you didn't take that route. That, if the traditional route is uh, an eight-lane freeway, you chose this little mm -hmm. road off to the side, which seemed like might be a slower path, but it was actually a very, by engineering standards, it was a fairly quick pathway to success for you, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's funny because I never looked at it that way, but uh, I remember being young and just having, uh, being, I had tunnel vision. I had the blinders on. People always said you couldn't do this, or people said you should fix gear instead of, instead of mix stuff, and uh, I don't know, I just, I just, I knew where I wanted to be, I knew where I was going, and I, I knew that if I worked hard, eventually it would happen. Good things would happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one thing I remember always having was passion, passion for music. And that, I think that's really what always drove me to work harder and harder mm -hmm. and just keep going. Because 
I always say this business, you got to get used to rejection sometimes more than, yeah. you know, because, I mean, there's a lot of rejection, but I see it as a constructive criticism, and you learn from it, and you keep yeah. going. Mm -hmm. So passion also too, is definitely. Also, too, cleaning bathrooms seemed to be a motivating factor for you, too, didn't it? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> first of all, I don't know where the cleaning bathrooms came from, but, yeah, wiping counters and mirrors at bathrooms, yes, that was not fun. And I remember the first day, uh, <clears throat> you know, at Enterprise, I had been assisting at other studios, I knew how to align machines. I, I was, a, you know, I thought I was a pretty good assistant at the time. And uh, mm -hmm. first day, I, w I wanted to be at a bigger studio. I wanted to, be, you know, just work with the big dogs. And uh, the first day, they had me the Windex and the and little paper towels. I'm like, ah, not cool. But but that didn't last long, did it? It didn't. I was one of the lucky few um, that. Again, the passion made me want to take the SSL books, the Studer books home, and. I didn't know what I was reading, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I became friends with the tech, the head tech. And then I would, you know, read some stuff, and I'd go to him the next day and ask him, hey, how do you align this to the, the, the new 827 studio? Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, and, and, and one thing in the studios, we all love these kids that want to learn. Mm -hmm. We want, we want, we like that because that's mm -hmm. sort of how we are. So people never mind sharing information. And, you know, no one's really, in, I don't believe, in, you know, in keeping information. And techs, assistants, engineers, mixers, they always want to share information. So if you're a kid that wants to learn and you want to be a sponge, there's guys out there that will teach. Look at yourself. You're here sharing all your, all your tricks, man. You know, and it, it's, it's great because it helps people. And, and, you know, there's no such thing as secrets here. You know? Let me ask you something, Manny. Um, I've got a great respect for your ability. You seem to have a gift of going into, even though you work at, at one of the great rooms in the world, you still have a gift for going into home project studios, other studios, and you still maintain your sound, you, that, that, that just amazing sound that you get, or excuse me, um, asombroso sound. Amazing. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm saying it in Spanish asombroso. today. Asombroso. You gotta like. Oh, asombroso. Asombroso. That was my Italian <laughs> Spanish one. <laughs> but how do you how do you do that? Like I, I we just watched into the layer where I, I I was kind of showing people how to use reference mixes to test different things. Do you, do you do you do it that way, or you just have a gift for for knowing what sounds right? Like for example. Um, uh, 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 one of the major successes that you had, you couldn't do it in your comfort zone. You had to go to their facility and do it. How do you how do you accomplish that? You know, I've never unless a client comes up and says, "Hey, check out the vibe of this record. We we're going for that. I'll listen to that." But I've never had. Um, I don't know, man. It's weird. I just go by just my gut, and sometimes I failed, and some you know I, I succeed. So. I just go with what is coming out of those speakers. And it may be, you know, sure, it may be a little more bass than my room or high top, or, but it's all relative within the mix. Within Do you ever play something that you know what it sounds like to judge what you're hearing in the room? No, like if I go to New York when working with Alicia in her uh -huh. new room and I don't know what the room sounds like, I'll spend maybe an hour playing some of the mixes oh. that I'm okay. familiar with. But then I will never listen to them again. And I may be completely going off path, but I just, again, I, I feel like, okay, the sub at 100 is this, and my top end is this, and the depth of the room will make me mix like this. And I, and I start throwing faders up. And, and I, at that point, I never go back and reference. You know, I've never been I good I at that. I could do that. I, I really? No, <laughs> if, I, if I trust myself, I end up with just something unusable. Well, that's interesting because that was that's why I was going to ask you. It feels to me like the organics of sort of your gut and your intellect inform you. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't be the same if it was one or the other. It's both. And if and if you don't have your gut part, yeah. it seems to me like that's real central to how you do what you do. Absolutely. I mean, listen. Everybody's a mixer nowadays. <clears throat> you know, there's different types of mixers. There's there's technical mixes, and we all know them, and they're great, and they can balance a mix beautifully, something that mm -hmm. I could never do. And then there's guys that want to take risks, and mm -hmm. I like to do that mm -hmm. personally just because I, I want something that doesn't, I don't want it to necessarily sound right. I want it to feel right. Mm -hmm. And sure, this vocal may be 
3 dB louder than what you would normally do, but there's an emotion to that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a snare that may be 3 dB louder than everything else, and to the average ear may, may seem a little off, or, or you know, and young engineers may be like, well, that's annoying. Well, that's mm -hmm. kind of the point, because now we're masking maybe. Passion, yeah. yeah, we're maybe masking things in the production. You know, our job is to take that production and make it and give it, you know, put it on steroids and make it, take it to its fullest potential. Right, absolutely. Um, one thing I've noticed, you're Latin, I'm Latin. It seems like Latins make better mix engineers. Man, that's another absolutely. Thing. <laughs> so once you go Latin, you can't. <laughs> yeah, well, so kind of and keep it. Can <laughs> can't take everything from us. <laughs> uh, in, in keeping with that theme. Uh, someone starting out, what advice would you give them to, like? To, to acquire the ability that you have to go from, like, say, John Mayer to Alicia to Kanye to, to Justin Bieber, how do right. you how do you acquire those skills? Because it seems like you would have to be intimately familiar with all those different genres. How do how do you accomplish that? The best advice I can give to a young engineer is you have to listen to music. You really have to be a music fan. Yeah. You have to you have to be a music fan. You can't be a a compressor fan, <laughs> or no, you have to have it's passion for music. Yeah. Uh, and w why that's going to help you is when you have different genres. You, s you know, every genre they put emphasis on different things, and you sort of know that. You know that if you do a more of a, an alternative, you know that the bass and the sub may not be as important as if you were doing, an, you know, a club, a banger, or, or, or some, you know, or anything, or a singer songwriter mm -hmm. vibe. So I think you gotta listen to a so lot you, of music. You use your experiences of, just from listening, and from the listening. emotion you get when you listen to something. Yeah. I, you know, you, and you listen, and you sort of analyze, and then you listen. And you, your mind, your left side and right oh, side oh. go back and forth. Oh, 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 I got a question. That's a good question, Herm. This yeah. is my Charlie Rose moment. Okay. What client that you've worked with uh, has blown the most speakers in your control room? Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I'll never forget this. He's like, man, it's distorted. It's distorted. What's going on? And I'm like, I just point at the, the speaker and the thing. It was hanging like this. It's going. Brr, brr, brr. I it happened twice in one day. I had somebody actually <laughs> monitor so loud once. I, I'm not going to say the name because they might still hire me. But actually, at Enterprise, back when we were working there, that, that one of my monitors actually caught fire. Oh, yeah. Not good. That's not a good. badge of honor. Zane, you got any questions for us? I have plenty. <clears throat> I'll start with the first one from John Carvel. He wants, this is actually for many, uh, how do you approach mixing such a diverse range of music? Like, do you approach each genre differently or? Yes, you know, I throw everything I know out with every, you know, every mix. Oh, it's cool. like, yeah, I just don't have these rules. Uh, no preconceived notions. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, I go, we listen to the rough and I f get whatever the emotion of that rough is. And, and really, you know, and I listen to it and think, okay, well, I know they're trying to go for this, so let me do my interpretation of that, of what that would be. And I go, going back to your question of what the advice is, the one thing I wanted to add to that is you can't discriminate with music. You just can't. Don't knock different genres. We're in the iPod generation where mm -hmm. when I was growing up, you had the, the rockers, the hip hoppers, yeah. the, the smokers. Nowadays, Everybody listens Absolutely. to the same thing, so you can't discriminate now. And in that, you're going to learn something from each genre, say country. I don't necessarily listen to country, but I do love the fact how they round and the depth and, and the emotion they put into the song. Mm -hmm. I, don't, you know, I don't like Marilyn Manson. I mean, I, not that I don't like, I don't listen to Marilyn Manson, but I appreciate those guitar tones. And over the years, when you start picking up little things like that, when you get, when you approach the mix, like, you know, you kind of have that in your head and you go by your gut. Like, you bring the faders up, you listen to the rough, and you're, the rough is telling you, this is the landscape. Be, be somewhere by Venice Beach, you know? Right. And, and you go for it. And all the things that you've learned from all the music that you've heard over the years almost help you. And again, in the song, the song, I, I always believe that it mixes itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... You don't force anything. The moment you start forcing things, then that's when you get into trouble. That's when you get lost in the mix. And luckily, you know, the more you do it, the, 
the quicker and the, you know you can get out of that rut and you can get back in track. Mm -hmm. Got a question from Rami K. Is there a level? This is for both of you guys. Is there a level you like to start with when you built the rest of the mix? How much headroom? That sort of thing. Like, do you set your kick at say minus three and you build around that, or what? What's the approach there? Well, I never thought about that. I, I'll tell you what I do. Uh, I'm, I'm so used to to the rooms I work in. I just start at the same volume. What it, that is, I don't know. It's just I just whatever moves me. And uh, recently, I've started working on the vocals first. Uh, I used to start with the drums first. Now, I like starting with the vocals first. But um, uh, I think Manny told me this a long time ago. It's 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 about ratio and proportion. So, whatever you start with needs to be important enough to the mix process that you can construct other things around it. So, uh, yeah, there is there is a ratio. Read the question again. Cause I guess he's just trying to figure out how close to zero do you start? Do you put the vocal at zero, build everything around it, or do you leave well, a little bit? Well, there's some of guys that start with compression already on their their stereo bus. So, so they're already kind of locked in a little bit. I I don't. Uh, I, I, I've just started recently using stereo bus compression a lot, and uh, I don't add it when I start. I add it kind of about a third of the way through. But let's, what do you... For me, uh, <clears throat> for example, you have an alternative track, mm -hmm. right? And, and you know that there's a peak in that track, whether it's after the bridge or whatever that peak. I try to start with that. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll loop that section knowing that that is my peak. Because if I do it the other way, if I start, from, say, from the verse and I, and I treat that as my peak, I have no headroom. So I might have to steal that from you, man. Uh, <laughs> so I try to get, you know, Did get... Did we get that on tape? I need to review that. <laughs> yeah, so I, at least that's my approach that's when, great you idea. know, levels. And, and again, with, say, an R&B track, uh, we don't know, you know, it's maybe a little bit more linear and it's more important to have your low information tighter. Or, you know, I make sure that the low frequency has some headroom in case I need it later on, or, or you, I play with my trim, overall trim, and see if I got. Need it meaning need the headroom going to a compressor. Uh, yes, you know I don't start with my compressor, my stereo bus compressor. I start with just raw, just mm -hmm. just let me hear what the sounds are. Now I got a sort of the painting of where it needs to go. Now let me hear what the raw information and what I may have to do and. And you know how well recorded, you know again how well produced it was too. You know a lot of the times we get lucky enough that yeah. there's this incredible producers that we get to work with, and it's just a matter of like little things here and there. Yeah. Other times there, you know, there's it's a great song, maybe not as a, an experienced producer that we sort of need to help mm -hmm. in certain areas, whether it's changing sounds, adding sounds to what they have, and changing the landscape a little bit to mask maybe some of their mistakes. Uh, so that's, you know, then we become fixers at times. <laughs> Did you have something you want to add there, Herb? I was just thinking in my mixes, I don't utilize any kicks. So I was yeah. trying to figure out how that would work. <laughs> Herb, this think? is February. You know what February is? It's a month. What is it? Tortured comic month. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Zan, I know you got some stuff in there for us. Make sure you're joining us in the chat room, which is driven by Ustream TV at thisweekend.com. So keep loading in. We got more stuff for it. Also, when you get a chance, make sure you go to Manny's website, right? Madokin. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. Is that better? Is that closer? Love. Manny Madokin. Madokin. You got to roll the R's. Madokin. Madokin. What you got for us, Zan? Mr. Full Fifth from the chat room <coughs> wants to know how you treat vocals that were tracked with too much compression. That's a question <laughs> for both of you guys. That's a, that's, a, uh, that's a chorus. Basically what you have to do is, uh, I know it sounds like I'm being a smart ass, but basically you just have to uncompress them. So what you have to do is just kind of ride the levels a little more intricately than you normally would. And then because compression sometimes changes the EQ, with plugins you can automate the EQ to to kind of give it that. It, it, it's, it's very painstaking. Sometimes I try um, the Renaissance compressor in the expand mode. That helps a little bit, but basically you just have to kind of over, override the EQs and then um, then kind of compensate for the fact that, that you lost a little bit of the, the low frequencies and a little bit of the high frequencies. So it takes a lot of work. It, it, nowadays there's really no need for that because compression 
and the tracking process was mostly to keep your level to tape uh, correct. Now that's not as much of a need, so people really don't need to compress their vocals that much to where it would be a, a hindrance to us. How do you do it, Manny? You know, <clears throat> it's, it's tough. I mean, it depends on, you know, how the things around the vocal work. Mm -hmm. The way I approach that is I'll start mix, I'll have some blends, and, uh, and I know the vocal's over compressed, so I'll emphasize that. So I'll even, I'll compress it even more, but not to compress it, but I'll use, say, an 1176, an R, you know, an RC, RCA to kind of give it a little grain mm -hmm. so that it was almost like an effect. Okay. If that doesn't work, then I try to just color stuff around that vocal. So, you know, so the vocal doesn't sound as compressed as, as if it was by itself. So you try to, what's connected to the vocal is it a guitar. Maybe the guitar, you EQ it so that they, the frequencies sort of kind of blend together and all of a sudden that compressed vocal doesn't sound maybe as compressed because what the colors around that so I try to put emphasis on that and then color around it. Wow. That mm. sounds hard. <laughs> that sounds hard. <laughs> uh, you're asking. Uh, you know but uh, along those lines I, I, I'm not going to tell you the name of the song. Email now. I'll email me and I'll tell you the name but I, I had a song that had some distorted vocals so I just made the whole track. The whole hey, vocal distorted. There it seemed go. to work as a number one record. There you go. Zan? Uh, Carrie, 2011, from the chat room, wants to know how you treat uh, Fender Road parts, especially the bass end of it, to get it sounding warm and not muddy. Mm. Mr. Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> it depends what information you got down there. You know, if your bass, if you have a P bass, you know, and they, they clash, then you got to take, you know, something needs to take priority. So if you want the rose to be the focal point, then you carve some stuff out on the P bass. Uh, now, if the rose is not recorded properly or it's not a good sound, then I try to get some of those low mids out, out of the way so that you can still get the, the, the bell sound and sort of mm -hmm. the, the, not the low end. So instead so of adding the top, you take the... the yeah, I take, the tend to take four anywhere between four and eight hundred out. Mm -hmm. and, and then you raise the volume and kind of and all of a sudden you have this warmer sound mm -hmm. um, as opposed to more of a boxier sound that may yeah. not be pleasant. Well, quickly though, there's, there, I, I, I think Manny might agree. We basically, we get two different kinds of road sounds. We get the kind where the, the tines, the, the high-end belly part of the sound is important. And then we get the other kind of road sound where that's not important. It's just kind of rolled off. So. If you, if, you, if, you're, if, you, if you need the, the, the belly part, you, you would attack it by adding maybe some top end, and then if you get the browner one, like Manny said, maybe attack it by taking out some 400 to 800. Yeah. I would also, I like to pan them and put a tremolo on them, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, Herb, you, you're next. Question for you. Does business come your way outside of records? Movies, television? Live Not so things. much television, but movies, you know, like we just went through this. Yeah, no, I and Joey did this, uh, the Justin Bieber movie recently. Oh, cool. and that's, that's fun stuff, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so much fun. Uh, uh, but, you know, yeah, it's mainly records, you gotcha. know, maybe mainly 98% of it is records. Gotcha. And the reason I ask that is, as we talked about earlier before the show started, the business has changed so much. Yes. You know, how, how do you see those changes and how they affected you? And look in your crystal ball, how does it look down the road? You know, luckily, I mean, <clears throat> you know, the business side of it has changed, but the music is more exciting today, in my opinion, than ever. I agree. You cool. know, you got these kids, you know, 17, 18 years old with a computer, and they can create, and yeah. that's, that's what music is about. You got to be a forward thinker, and you got to always come up with new, fresh sounds. Right. Where if, when I was growing up, I had a you know, I had a four track and I had a ping pong and it sounded like this and I had it. That's right. Nowadays all you got unlimited, yeah, you got yeah, unlimited yeah. tracks and I think that's really, really good for all of us and just music in general. People are, oh, music is dead. It's not dead, it's actually m more exciting mm -hmm. today, you mm -hmm. know. And now you just got to search and we got the tools, we got, you know, we got our computers here and we can search and and it's endless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm going to put you on the spot. I, I, I always ask my guests uh, about a go-to piece of gear. In terms of, uh, what do you want to hear from, you, you want to hear drums, vocals, or keyboards? Manny's go-to EQ for that. Uh, I'm getting a lot of questions on synths. So synths. maybe keys or okay. synths. And with synthesizers, that's a whole different thing, because sometimes yeah, you got to get them out of the way. Some, uh, someone just 
asked me on about how do you they're so I think he used the word powerful how do you fit them in the mix what's your go-to uh, process let's say for, for, for synthesizers and I know that's a broad question that you can't answer yeah, you, but just, yeah, it, <laughs> uh, gosh I don't know how to answer one. that myself um, with keyboards it really depends on on the genre I think if you're doing pop you know you gotta make sure that some some of these synths really cut through and you gotta you know, you gotta carve out. I feel like you gotta carve out and you gotta kinda, you know, do tighter EQs and tighter bandwidths and you know, I, I'm on the SSL so with with that stuff I really just select frequencies and add and take so away. for example, like say, like say a song that's got a, just a buzzy, roundy synth, you would, you would you would carve the bottom out to leave a little room for the top end of the bass and, yeah, and the mid-range for the vocals and Again, it's you know it's it's if art. I know. It's yeah. art. So you, you, what you have to do, I think, the best advice to young engineers and mixers are, is is not the sound that you need to focus on. It's what's around the sound. So yeah, we could carve out 800 on one keyboard. The next day, I could add the same frequency. So there's really no rule of thumb. It's really think about what's around. What do you want around that keyboard? The synth. Do you want do you want do you want a pad? Is the pad taking away too much room that the bass doesn't exist and the and your and the sound starts to sound muddy? Or do you want the bigness? The, do you how much depth do you want in the mix? How much width and all these things kind of kick in. So you really got to see what's around yeah. that. So what you're saying is, <clears throat> if we were making spaghetti sauce. Uh, you don't just worry about the taste of the garlic. You worry about what the garlic is doing in the sauce. And if you put a little too much garlic, maybe you can use a little sugar to cut the acidity of the t blah 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 blah. But does better. that? That's it. Does cut. That's, that's boom. That's a Made great it. way. That's, yeah. a, that's something for you guys to pick up on. And uh, one of the one of the re recurrent recurrent is that a word? Word. It is a word. Uh, one of the recurrent themes of, of of what Manny's been saying is, for him, engineering is an, is an art. It's not. It's the, the technical part is is just a way to get at the emotion in a song to get to get at the artistic value of a song and to make a song appeal on a on a on a much broader level than just to impress other engineers. So uh, keep watching the show. We're going to show you the technical stuff, but also too, I want you to keep in mind that uh, that at the end of the day, the technical stuff is like Manny has so eloquently said is is part of the process of amplifying the emotion taking what the original creator of the material and the music wanted to convey and, and amplifying that. I painted myself in a corner with that sentence, but I thought I came out pretty good, right? Well. That was good. I thought you did good. really well. Too. So, Herb, uh, have we got any more time left? We have a little bit more time left. Let's do another uh, question do then. Yeah. I'd like to combine two. Um, uh, Danny from the chat room wants to know what's on Manny's um, mix bus. And after you talk about that, maybe elaborate on what you mean by carving out. Manny is not allowed to say what's on his mix bus. That's, can that's just rude. Speak to that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I love the SSL. I, I work on the K, uh, my, uh, my bus compressor. I love that. Sometimes I use it and a lot, and other times I barely touch it. So it's. Is there one genre that you find you use it with yeah, more than others? Yeah, I mean, others? if I'm doing sort of an alternative thing, I, I want the glue. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I want it to do this, and and stereo bus compression will get you that. My I, my goal in starting though is ma having the glue without the compressor because that's just too easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> to do. But yeah. they're so, both hard for me. Yeah. But that's another story. But but I try to. Um, my go-to stereo bus compressor would have to be the SSL. I mean, that's cool. that's the one. And I what know about if somebody can't get an SSL? The Waze one's pretty good. The isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, that's and, actually and really the, uh, really good. The way all the, the Waze G384 stuff. G384 is, yeah. is a good alternative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To get, to try you know, it. listen. Sometimes it's I'll Alan I don't Smart. I don't overuse it, but the L2 or the Massey 2007. If you just yeah. you know if you ha if you have just that one little tiny bit of limiting, just kind of to glue everything. Hey, listen, some other genres, we don't want the glue. Like, I remember yeah. some R&B stuff and some hip-hop stuff, we want separation. We don't want the kick and snare to yeah. coexist. Yeah. But if you have, say, say, a Kings of Leon type of track, you want that glue. And how to, how to get that glue is mm -hmm. it's a challenge, and how to de-glue it is a challenge. What was well. his name? Uh, that was Danny. Danny. 
a couple of episodes, a couple episodes I, I talked about uh, Michael Brower's techniques, didn't I? Yeah, Michael Brower, a uh, close friend of Manny's, uh, a new friend of mine. Uh, Michael's got quite a bit on his website about how he treats uh, the stereo bus in terms of compression and, and any number of things. It's, it's, it's um, a lot of information, a lot of great information. On, on, yeah, he's the uh, best at the parallel compression, which I, I, I try to do as well, but, uh -huh. I mean, he is the master at that. Yeah, him and uh, uh, Bob Power, I like Bob's stuff, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So could you elaborate a little bit on what you mean by carving out? Carving out, meaning again, going back to what's what's around that sound. So sculpture, say, yeah, yeah, sculpture it's like a, yeah, it's like <clears throat> carving out. Meaning, if the synth has say too much one K and the vocal sits right with that synth, but your focal point is your vocal at this point, uh, then carving out would be just simply taking out one K. So whatever gets in the way of that, you take away and then you bring up. That's mm -hmm. as simple as that. So the most important thing would win the battle, in other words, and then... Yeah, the pick second, a focal point, yeah. absolutely. I always say everything, just pick a focal point. If that's, you know, and then you have a second focal point. Say you're, most of the time in the verse, your focal point will be the vocal. Yeah. And then there's something else, there's a rhythm, there's a rhythm, something rhythmically that's happening. And then there's a second focal point, could be a pad, could be a synth, could be a guitar under it. And separating those, uh, now you have your landscape and how you... I got a question for you. Um, and uh, I don't know quite how to ask this question, but there's some engineers that, that work with frequency, some work with sound. Mm -hmm. You seem to, to be sometimes working with transients. You seem to not just, you seem like to have, to have a broader spectrum of, the, of, of what we're given that you work with. Like I've noticed sometimes that, that you'll have a, different amounts of transients coming through on different instruments and you kind of blend the transients like like some engineers like me we just leave all the transients going all the time and then some just nuke them all all the time but you seem to have a, a gift for y using certain transients for certain to get your ear to find it is that what, like a, like on the John Legend song that we we talked about earlier I mean I I think that's a, a genius use of of of, of Run it, running certain things through certain tube electronics that kind of manipulate the transients for you. Is that something you do consciously or is that something that you just feel I don't feel do it, it consciously, but I mean, I, I've noticed that I try to balance it out. I, I, I like just balance. I mean, I don't see one approach and being the approach. Uh, transients are, you know, people, they're, they're really good or really bad. Mm -hmm. And when used properly, they can be they can have a really good effect on the emotion of something. Mm -hmm. So, say you're doing a guitar and you want those transients will cut across, you know, they will cut through. They help you refine it. They help you refine it. And, go, and going back to the focal points too, it's, mm -hmm. you know, what we're doing is, it's a push and pull. We want the listener for those three and a half minutes um, to be engaged in this. And we have the tools to, you know, if it gets boring, we can reel them back in how? Well, by adding things that may not necessarily be right. And how you do that, then the listener would be like, oh, man, that's just, that was unpleasant. But now we're, now you're back in. I got your attention. Now, yeah. now you're back in. And that's sort of, you know, being able to just keep their attention span. You know, nowadays, 30 seconds are on to the next song. So if we can capture that, and it's all part of the production. I mean, the producer does this, but we're just emphasizing that. And, it, and when you have a great mix is when people don't listen to the mix, right? Mm -hmm. They listen to the emotion of the song and they love the song. They either want to cry, tap their, whatever the emotion they want to do. They don't notice us, so we're invisible. And that's, that's when I think we've done our job. Time flies. Well, it's been very quick. Yeah. Zan, give us one last question and we're going to wrap okay. it up. And one get last this question from Jonathan Campbell in New Zealand. He uh, is hoping you guys can address balancing a mix so that it translates across most speaker systems. Well, jo Jonathan? Jonathan. Jonathan, we, we kind of the, the main theme of this whole show has somewhat been about that. Um, I'd say that main, main, maybe we, we could use his question to kind of tie everything together that we've been talking about because what Manny was talking about carving out, what he was talking about, uh, the way he, he does balancing. Uh, I, I think the whole show has, has spoken to that. I'll just um, 
I'll let Manny finish it, and then I'll tie everything up and say goodbye. <laughs> well, you know, the way I see it is I want it to sound good coming out of my speakers because those are the speakers I know. So my advice is just pick a room, set of monitors that you trust, and just go with it because you're not going to satisfy every system in the world. Mm -hmm. Just know that whatever comes out of those speakers that you know just feels right and just trust that eventually it will sound right everywhere because you've captured the emotion of what that song or that mix, whatever that is. And uh, sure, it, it may have a little more sub somewhere else or a little more top, or, but at least me, people will not listen for that. They'll listen to, man, that groove is hot or whatever it is in the song. So make sure that your room, whatever that is, whatever monitor it is, feels right. Excellent, excellent. Let's do some housekeeping and get out of here. What do you think? Sounds good to me. What do I do at the end of the show? I forget. Well, you, I say stuff like make sure you Twitter us at our handle at, at Pensado Place. And I like email that. Us at, I like that. At Pensado Place at thisweekend.com. You go to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel at This Weekend and all I'm just that stuff. i checking my notes. Got you. <laughs> and then you say, and then we also say Manny thanks. Absolute yeah. pleasure having thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Oh, 16 no, years of knowing each yes. other, and I will I will say this: having consistency as a human being and as an artist is incredible. This guy's the same from the first time we all started this together. And congratulations on your success. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you uh, one thing you got to know: Manny is is very busy, and and a lot of the cats that we're going to have on the show are very busy. Sometimes we might announce somebody in the future, and they might have to work, they might not make it. Sometimes I might have to work, and might not make it, because we're getting you top quality people in the future. I've uh, talked to Jack Joseph Puig. He said he, he'll help us out. Drop by Chris Anacute, Jason Joshua, uh, on and on and on and on. I'm forgetting a bunch of people <laughs> already, but just kind of keep, keep, keep tuned and let us know what you, know, you want to hear. We'll try our best to get Manny back as soon as he has time. Uh, the time kind of flew by today, but anyway, thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, we can't answer them all. We've been trying. I've, I've actually... Um, and, uh, my thumbs are about <laughs> two inches shorter. Last week I begged for yes and no questions, so this week give me multiple choice, A, B, C, D, and I'll get to those first. <laughs> See you next week. Mm -hmm.